so we know that Vy is also equal to 0 0.5 P, and this is equal to 3454.76 pounds. So P is equal to 6909, no, or in fact, 6909.5 pounds, or I will call it 6910 pounds of force. Okay. So this is based on the shear failure or, or, or the failure of the fastener. Okay. Now, the next one, mode two, right? Anyone, any questions so far? So this is mode number one, okay? The failure of the what? The failure of the joints, okay? Anyone, any questions so far? No, you all are still there, right? So is this is this one one screw will fail or all of them will simultaneously fail? This is only consider uh, all of them. Okay, good question. Now this is based on the failure of one set of screws at that spacing, and the failure will occur. At 0 0.5 p does that make sense so you asked me eugene okay you asked me eugene is it going to fail here is it going to be fail here or is it going to fail here am i right uh wouldn't it fail directly under the load okay would it fail at P? No, I, I'm, I'm more asking, is this, you did answer my question though, um, that it would just be one bolt, not all of them. Yeah, it will be, well, there you go, okay? So, so it will fail in any of this pink position I highlight is because the shear stress, the shear force is constant. But okay, once one of them fails, does it just, it's just dominoes, the rest of them fail? One yeah. So if one has been pulled out, right, right. If if one start to slip, the rest will just go. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. If one just start to slip and then the rest will just go. Okay. But I cannot tell you based on shear. I can't tell you based on shear. I I, I if if these three pink lines that are highlighted, you ask me exactly where I can tell you because the shear force that's applied on the pink height position which I highlight the shear force are the same right good question so the next one the next one is mode number two right mode number two is the failure due to the wooden structure Okay, failure due to the wooden structure. So uh, I'm going to do it in the next page. So failure in the right in the wooden structure. So I'm going to get the image again. Right, so if we were to look at this uh, cross section again, let's focus on cross section. Don't we don't need to look at this? Okay, let's focus on the cross section. So, where about in the wooden structure weight fail? Weight fail at the flange. Let's say your fastener, your fastener obey the rules. Okay, your fastener is like right. We are really secure. Okay, which part will fail at the flange? Or at the web, anyone. And where about the web? So if this is our centroid, where will it fail? Is if the failure is due to the is due to the uh, wooden structure. Anyone? No takers. So uh, where this will is just 
This is yep. just out of instinct, but uh, at the very top of the um, of the web, and that being so so um, uh, nine nine inches from the centroid, nine inches uh, from the centroid on the on the web, and that is with the logic that plywood has a, a better resistance uh, on along its longitudinal. Okay, my apologies. Okay. Uh, Failure of the wooden structure due to shear, not normal stress. Okay. So your answer will still be the same or you will change now? My apologies, my bad, okay. <laughs> uh, I think at the flange, like... Uh... At the flange, okay. So if we were to apply the understanding based on first principle. Okay, so this is our, this is our centroid, the shear stress. Okay. So just a general sketch. So this is our Y. Right? So at the edges, it'll be zero. So I suspect you'll do this, you do this, and then the cross sectional area change. You're gonna have a step, and then you're gonna have here. So this is how your shear stress will look like. Does that make sense, yes or no? Right? So your maximum shear, right, will occur here. And it's going to be at the where? At the centroid, right? Why that's the case? Because at the centroid, okay, at the centroid, okay, wait, wait, before I go on, the formula we're going to apply is shear stress is equal to VQ over IT, right? And when tau max will occur, when V and I did not change, remember I told you, V and I are hell what? constant. However, tau max will occur when Q is at its maximum and T is at its what? Minimum. So T minimum, right, for this case, T minimum is equal to uh, 0 0.5 inch multiplied by 2, which is 1 inch. Why 2? Because you have what? left and right and then q max is at where q max is exactly at the where at the centroid which i'm highlighting now okay does that make sense yes or no right so if it's going to fail due to the wooden structure and not due to the fastener that's where it's going to fail okay we know that at the extreme points over here at the outer surface away from the centroid the shear stress is equal to what zero okay the shear stress is equal to zero so from here we are going to calculate the so we already know our t already our t is one inch two over here because of left and right and then over then we found our q so I mentioned of q so is equal to q of the uh, flange plus by twice Q of the web twice again because of left and right. Okay, so like nothing, nothing really different compared to the previous example, right? You have to consider the two. So the flange we calculated is 168, right? We, we have 168. So this is plus by twice. The width of the uh, web is 0 0.5. The depth is equal to 5 plus 4 is equal to uh, 9. And the Y bar is equal to uh, 5 plus 4 
the whole thing divided by two, All right? So that is to consider the web. So over here, you have 168 plus by 4.5 times 9 times 0.5 times 2 is equal to 40.5. So this is equal to 168 plus by 40.5 is equal to 208.5 pound inch. Eh, pound inch. Inch to power of 3. And then finally, from here, we can find our shear max. is equal to 0 0.5 p right that's our v our uh, first our second moment of area uh, wait let me look at our second moment is 20902 uh, 2902 q is 208.5 and thickness is equal to uh, one inch or 0 0.5 times two, right? So we know that tau max, the maximum shear is equal to uh, three times 10 to about three. This is equal to zero point. So this will be equal to uh, 0.5 times 208.5 divided by 2902 divided by 0.5 divided by two is equal to 35. Point nine two four times ten to the power minus three p. So p is equal to three power three divided by. So it's equal to eighty three point five one one times ten to the power three pound force. Okay, so it's really 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 what high. Okay, and the last one mod three. Right, mode number three or number three, and you guys are very good at this, is failure due to normal stress induced by I'll be just two more minutes, okay, by bending moment. So we know that the stress allowable is equal to moment MY. Okay, so for this case, our is MZ over IZZ <laughs> multiplied by Y. It's confusing, yeah? In shear is uh, V z or v y over i z z so this one is uh, m z over i z z so our, our allowable is eight times 10 to about three the moment we have calculated so the moment based on our bending moment diagram is 24 p right so the moment is 24 p Divide by IZZ, so IZZ we know is 2902. And then the Y, so the Y is equal to 5, the maximum is at the outer. So 5, 9, 5 plus 4, so this is 9. So with this, P will be equal to 8 to the power 3 times by 2902, divided by 24, divided by 9, is equal to 107. Point uh, four eight one times ten to the power three p. So therefore, the p allowable will be equal to the, the the will be equal to the one due to the fastener. The p allowable will be equal to hold on. What do we calculate? Will be equal to six nine zero nine point five. Six nine. 
So this is the control by the fastener. So if you want your structure to be able to withstand higher forces, what you could do is you could space in your fastener closer together, right? That, that, that will help. But the manufacturing time to assemble your structure will increase. <laughs> okay, you have to be really, really careful. Or you can increase, okay, or another, yeah, I don't think it's any worth increasing the thickness of any of your geometry. Okay, so it's the spacing I deal with. I, 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 I'm trying to think if you can also use uh, bolts that are of bigger diameter. That will also help. Okay. With that note, that's all for my lecture today. Anyone, any questions, please? Uh, Eugene, I just have yes. a question about the levels of like the screws. If you go back to the diagram up there, you see how you have like two, uh, two levels of screws. If yeah. you add another level in between, for example. Would that also help or no? Or like add like another like level of screws because I'm not sure if your calculations are based on like one level only of screws like just the top. You you will only consider the 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 top layer or the bottom layer because of how the shear stress is distributed. Because symmetrical. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you put so if you put another layer of screws in the center. It will not really help at all, wait, right? Yeah, you're not holding anything unless you put another bar down here, right? And then you get what I mean. So it, it will help in that context because you increase your second moment of area also. I see. Also, for the rules that uh, you have, the four rules we have, do they always apply no matter what the like the kind of question we have in terms of finding the shear stress? Can you see this structure that I'm showing now? Yeah. Yeah, the rules still apply. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's the beauty. That's the, we, can you see without the rules, things will be really, really complex, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, and those rules are, are derived from the first moment of area. If you look at the context, it's all based on the what? First moment of area. That's why I, I hope from here, you all will really appreciate deriving equations. Then you can create rules, and then the rest are all geometries, yes or no? Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any? Thank you. Any questions so far? Yeah, I have a question for the first moment of the area. Yes. Um, so for the fastener, you only look at the the wooden member in between the web, right? Yeah. Yep. And then for the failure due to the wooden structure, you look at the in, entire the entire thing, the web and the and the flange, I guess. Yes. Okay. Is that like the same for every type of problem that's like this? Yes. Okay. okay. Nothing changed. Okay. Awesome. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of this. But that is only true if your structure are joined together. If it's a solid piece, no. Okay. If it's a solid piece, you don't need to. If a solid, if this is a solid piece, you will not even look at the joints at all, will you? Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Any other questions, please? Anyone? If not, I'd like to thank you for your time and I really, really, really appreciate your patience with me today for me making mistake. Okay. Thank you all so much. Okay. See you guys Tuesday next week. Now, Tuesday, uh, sorry, Thursday, you're going to have a quiz again. Okay. See you then. Bye bye. Uh, Eugene, can I, can I grab you first?